What's up, guys? Welcome back to Drums and Drams. My name's Cameron, and today I wanted to feature for all of you my favorite finished whiskey of 2023. Now, admittedly, for me, 2023 was the year that <laughs> I kind of swore off entirely the idea of buying finished whiskey because I think it is such a horrendously oversaturated and just terrible part of the market right now. When you look on shelves these days, there is so much crap four, five, six-year-old whiskey, bad barrels, bad batches thrown into finishing casks by people that are either trying to build a brand and make a quick buck or people that just don't know what they're doing when it comes to whiskey making, blending, finishing in general, or D, all of the above, right? This is pissing me off right now, and I hate to go on a rant at the beginning of this video, but it's the reason why I've just decided, you know, unless I hear good things about a bottle or there's somebody behind the brand that I know or trust or you know something like that i'm not going to have enough faith to put my wallet on the line for crap whiskey a lot of which is like 60 70 80 plus dollars a bottle no i'm, I'm not doing it anymore but today's whiskey for me stood alone in 2023 and it's actually a, a shocker because i thought this was going to be a gimmick whiskey i thought this was going to be uh a whiskey that relied so much on the finish in a we in a bad way, weird way, so much on its proof, but that's not the case. And so I want to tell you what this is, and I have my phone here so that I get all the details right. This is from River Roots Barrel Company based out of Cleveland, Ohio. So two, two and a half hours from me. I hope to visit there someday. This is a 13-year-old bourbon. It's an initial maturation of seven years in New American Oak Casks and then transferred to a port barrel for six years. And so when I saw this bottle go up on sealbox.com, which is where it was sold, I remember looking at this bottle, $275. That is like, you know, that's a crazy price point. Um, but 146.56 proof, massive proof on here, humongous finish. And at the time, I didn't think anything of it. It's, it's long gone, it's sold out. But thankfully, Toshi Bake, <laughs> Uh, on YouTube here, great supporter of the channel, sent me this sample in, in his latest care package, delivery of amazing samples. And so I want to say thank you to Toshi for introducing me to this, because otherwise I would have had no idea just how special this whiskey is. Like I said, 13 years total, seven first and then six in a port barrel, 146.56 proof. And here's the interesting part. The mash bill is one that I know, 75 corn, 21 rye, four malted barley, which is the low rye bourbon mash bill, from MGP, but this is not MGP. This is a Kentucky bourbon. So seven, uh, excuse me, six years ago, it was seven years old and it went to that port barrel. And I'm just trying to think of like, where where could this come from with this mash bill? I don't have any idea. If you guys know, let me know in the comments. I'm not gonna speculate on it. It doesn't really matter at this point. We know it's sourced whiskey. We know it's massively finished in a port barrel. Um, and as I continue on here on my phone, I have another thing pulled up. I just wanted to say this. River Roots actually reached out to me after seeing me talk about this whiskey on a live stream, and they mentioned that they have some more barrels of this coming. Uh, they actually just turned 14 years old total, and I don't know when those are going to show up, if they're going to be on Sealbox or other places, but it's just worth saying that this is not a one-off. There, there are other whiskeys from River Roots coming out like this, and the last thing I'm going to say before I nose and taste this whiskey is that on secondary, I actually saw a picture of a bottle from Toppling Goliath, which many of you are going to know as being a beer company, but it seems that Toppling Goliath has some similar products hitting the market right now, which is sourced Kentucky bourbon that spent 60 months in a port barrel at 125 proof. So maybe it's the same source as this stuff, maybe not, I'm not sure. It's interesting nonetheless, so we might start seeing some more of this hit the market here soon. Extended port aged 146 proof bourbon. Let's check this thing out on the nose. Yeah, and it's a it's a bruiser. Um, it has that Coy Hill effect on it. It's got that that density of flavor, or in this case, aroma. It's got that density that reminds me of Coy Hill, where it's just so gripping right away. And I was afraid when I first nosed and tasted this that it was gonna be all port cask. It was just gonna be blown out of the water, and there's gonna be no trace of bourbon left. Yes, it is heavily port finished but it's actually like a really enjoyable nose. It, it's not, it, it hasn't hit that skunky territory, which is what I call it when you have a port or a brandy finished whiskey 
that just gets really funky after too long in the barrel. I have a Bell Mead that I think spent 40 months in a brandy barrel that is just disgusting, unrecognizably bitter. This has not reached that point and it spent six years in the port cask. So what does this smell like? Well, for me, this is like the most dark, rich, uh, syrupy, soaked fruits that you can imagine. I have a jar in my fridge of Traverse City cocktail cherries. And there's this like really thick cocktail cherry syrup in that jar. And it's very sweet. For me, it's like imagining the texture of that cocktail cherry syrup without the sweets, just intense, intense fruitiness and concentration of flavor. That is what I get on this, but it's like raisins, plums. It feels almost like a brandy finish more than it does a port finish in some ways for me. And I like that about it. Basically like Chateau de la Bod batch one, Magnus cigar blend earlier batches and Coy Hill all three somehow had a baby. This is what that baby would be, I think. Yeah, interestingly enough, it actually has like an MGP element to it because I think of that kind of perfumey, really dark fruit notes uh, that, that are in there. It reminds me again of that Chateau de la Bod batch one in some ways, but it is a Kentucky bourbon and there is a little nutty note in here that reminds you that it's Kentucky. Any other notes, I could believe this is an Indiana bourbon, even if it's not. But there's this little nuttiness hanging out that's like, you know, just kind of popping out every once in a while. It's it's maybe walnut or hazelnut. It's something like that. It's not it's not a big peanut note like you would get on a Beam or a Heaven Hill product. Overall, just a nice nose. It is <laughs> it is uh, crawling up your nose. You got to be careful when you nose this thing. But if anybody out there has this bottle or gets a future bottle of something similar. Think you're going to enjoy it. I mean, all the barrels are going to be different, obviously, but this feels like to me, it's just a special whiskey, and that's why it's my favorite finished whiskey of the year. Let's uh, let's get this thing on the palate now. Cheers. Wow, small sips. 146.5 proof is no joke. Wow, that is like. That is so gripping. It takes the moisture out of your palate, but not in a way that's like offensive or, or or bad. It's just because there's so much alcohol going on in here, it has no choice but to just attack your mouth. <laughs> that's the best way to put it. Um, Wow, uh, big kind of like fudge notes in here as well. So all of this just disgustingly dark fruit, insanely dark, like I just... That example of the Traverse City cherry syrup without the, without the sugar, you know, th that example is the best way I can describe this. It's so thick on the palate, but there's also this fudge brownie thing going on, which is like that Coy Hill effect. Just uh, an amazing whiskey. And I, I don't think it's over finished. I think the finish got to a point where, yes, it took over, but it didn't ruin the whiskey. And that's interesting. I, I don't, I mean... In my mind, if I have a finished whiskey, I either want it to be kind of like barely finished where it just adds one extra dimension and, and marries in perfectly with the base whiskey, or I want it to take over the whiskey and make it a little more singular and focused, but in a really good way. That's what this is. It's focused. It knows what it is. It's not particularly complex, I would say, but you don't mind it because it's so intense on the palate. You drink this whiskey when you want something uh, like this, when you want a dark fruit explosion. This is what you go to. You don't do this if you're going to sit around and, you know, contemplate life. You go here when you, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like lifting weights for your mouth. That's the best way to put it. Man, I love this stuff. It is getting a little, getting a little more port now on the second sip. I can feel a little bit of that sticky kind of um, that kind of raisin port feel that you get sometimes from port finished whiskeys. That is starting to show up now, kind of like that tobacco type note. Just amazing. And I'll tell you what, the oak is well integrated here. It's not it's not too, you know, oak tannin for it or whatever. So uh, if you guys see one of these River Roots or maybe even some of the other companies that are doing this, I'm not sure what their products are going to be like. I can't speak to it. It is interesting to see other companies with similar things coming out. 
But for this River Roots single barrel, this is my favorite finished whiskey of 2023. It's not even close. And yeah, I didn't taste hundreds and hundreds of finished because I think it's a crap part of the market right now, but it seems like River Roots knows what they're doing with this. And so my hat's off to them. Big kudos. I'm, I couldn't be more excited. And I hope that when some of those other single barrels come out, I'm sure there's going to be, you know, the click frenzy for people to try to get those releases on Sealbox. I hope I'm able to get the next one because this is awesome stuff. Cheers to those guys at River Roots. Cheers to everybody watching. Thank you so much. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you've tried this or a similar product. Check out the Drums and Drams Patreon to support the channel further. And P.S. I forgot to say something in the video. I know it's a $275 bottle. I know that's expensive. This whiskey earns every bit of a higher price point. $275 is still a lot of money, but this is a special whiskey. I really believe that. So I know that's not for everybody. I know people don't like price tags like that for sourced finished stuff. This is a special whiskey in my mind. It is what it is. It's really good stuff. That's all. Cheers, guys. Thank you.